going to be a yogist from uh, icy cold Hermanus today, where if we have our first winter rains, so it's storming outside and I can leave this window open to bring extra light into the room. Now let's just start with saying Namaste to all. Greetings yogis. Our first pose today is Pashima Namaskarasana, so we'll do Namaste on our back. So you stand in Tadasana with all four corners of the feet firmly into the floor. You roll the shoulders back and take the arms out to the side. Stretch. Extend into your fingertips, lift into the crown of the head and feel your buttocks going towards your heels. Abdomen to the spine. And from here you swing your arms and you bring the palms together into Pashima Namaskarasana. See how far those hands can go. Preferably you want all ten fingers together there on the back with the little finger pressing into the chest to lift the spine. If this is completely impossible, then you hold your elbows. Stand like this for a moment. Press especially the thumb side of the finger, index side of the finger, fingers firmly into each other. Take a deep breath here. Feel the opening in your chest. Bring the elbows closer to the body and those hands deep into the chest. Think feet, from the feet grow tall. And then from here, release. So we're preparing on a little back bend sequence and the next pose that we are going to do is going to stretch our quadricep muscles. So you might need a wall, might not need a wall. Um, I'm going to show with the wall. If you have something to touch just in the beginning to get balance, you start in Tadasana. So let's just do it together. You've got support. You're in Tadasana. Now from here, lift your left foot up and hold it with your left hand. So you're holding the ankle, but lift that left shoulder, roll it back. So you will see my elbow slightly bend. And then the action here is to really open that quadricep muscle. So you pull the knee back so that you feel the stretch in your quadricep muscle. Firm standing leg, grow tall, and if you've got your balance, you can take your right hand up to the ceiling and stretch into your fingertips. Extend. See if there's a little bit more release in that quadricep. Left shoulder back, elbow slightly up to, the, to lift the chest, and look ahead of you. Don't look down. Extend, stretch, and release. Come for the other side. Tadasana. Take hold of your right ankle. I'll face you. You can use your support or your balance. Hold your right ankle. Now bend that left, uh, right elbow back. Open the shoulder and the chest. And when you've got your balance, you take the left arm up to the ceiling. You stretch, stretch, stretch. And feel your standing leg firm. Extend into that quadricep of the right leg. Stretch. And release. Okay, so the next pose that we're going to do is the same pose, but we're going to do it seated. And for that, it's kind to have support for your knee. So you can have a folded blanket, or if you have a foam block, you can use that, or you can just double fold the sticky mat. So let's do it together. You come onto your knees, and we're going to place the foam underneath the right knee first. And you lunge your left foot forwards. Okay, so 90 degree angle with the, with the shin of the left. Lean slightly forwards. And you can adjust your right leg so that you get more onto the top part of the knee. And then you take hold of your right foot. And you aim to bring that foot a little bit closer to its own hip. Sit upright. Now press with the left hand on that right uh, left knee. Lift your chest. Can you open that quadricep a little bit more? Maintain that open chest. Take three deep breaths here. Taking the foot closer and closer to each own hip. Tailbone in. Chest lifted. And release. And then from here, you change to the other leg. So you put the foam or that folded blanket underneath your left knee. Right foot firm into the floor, 90 degree angle here. And you take hold of your uh, left foot 
and I'll bring my left foot to its own hip. I bend the elbow just like the standing pose. And you press onto the right knee to lift the chest, tailbone in, and chest lifted. Constantly adjusting that left foot to bring it closer to its own hip. Think tailbone action. Tailbone moves to pubic bone. Take a few deeper breaths here. And release. Okay. So now you come up to standing. And you can take your foam away. You might need support for your hands for sun salutations. You, you know yourself. Let's judge and do it together. So um, let me just show rather in the beginning what we, we're doing here today. Extension and then I lunge my leg back. 90 degree angle, hands on the knee and then lifting up. From there, Adha Mukha Svanasana, straight into Udva Mukha Svanasana, into Adha Mukha Svanasana. And the same leg that went back first is going to go forward. Okay? Lift up and then stretching and Namaste. So let's do it together. And at this point you might feel that you're already getting in a little bit heat in the body. So stand in Tadasana at the front edge of your mat. Bring my hands in Namaste. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, release into full Uttanasana. Come up halfway. This is where you might need to put the hands on the blocks. Extend the chest forwards. And now bend the knees, hands to the floor. Step your right leg back. So you have a 90 degree angle of a lunge with your left leg. Place the hands on the knee. Push into your back heel. Take the tailbone in. Arms up. Stretch. Make your back leg very active. Open up the chest, look ahead of you, and then hands down, step back into dark pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Go onto the ball mounds of the feet, then roll forward, shoulders back, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, and your right leg is going to come forwards now. Right leg forwards into your lunge, lift the arms up. Open the chest, step your left leg next to the right foot, stretch up into Udva Hastasana, Namaskarasana, Tadasana. Next side, Namaste, inhalation, full Uttanasana. Inhale, come up halfway, bend the knees, hands to the floor, step the left leg back. So now you're in your 90 degree angle here, hands to the knee, activate your back leg, open the knee, hands up to the ceiling, stretch, lift yourself out of your hips, and then hands to the floor, back into Adha Mukha Svanasana, on the ball mounds of the feet, over into Udva Mukha Svanasana, back to Adha Mukha Svanasana, Heels well back. Then we step the left leg forwards. Stay in the lunge. Take the hands up to the ceiling. Lift tailbone in. Look ahead of you. Activate the back leg. And step your right leg next to your left leg. Stretch into Udva Hasta. Into Namaskarasana. Into Tadasana. Okay, so now we're going to do something which possibly we haven't done before in this way. But I've been really working on Pashpottanasana for the whole month. So you know the pose well and we've explored every aspect of the pose except today. We're going to use it for our back bends. So pull your mat into the wall or whatever you've got in your room that gives you something solid to step into. And let me explain. I'm going to show first. So I've got my back foot into the wall and I step forwards. And today we're going to really extend up with those hands. And from here, I'm going to lift myself out of my hips, 
and I'm going to stretch and lean back and lean back and lean back and maybe you can find the wall. Opening the chest and then inhale, you come up and just get your feet together. Okay, so I'm beautiful in the sunshine now, so it's getting really nice and warm. So, get your right heel into the wall and step the left leg forward. So you see how I wobbled a little bit? Learn from my mistakes. We need to keep the legs very sturdy. So the left leg is forwards. It's wide enough. The feet are firmly, both feet are bearing weight evenly. Hips facing evenly forwards. Inhale, take the hands up. Now you've got to really activate your two feet. Lift the tailbone into the body. Lift the chest, take the shoulder blades in. We aim to keep the lower back long. And from here, you lift the chest. Just think lifting chest. Lift the chest, lift the chest. And take the hands back as far as you can. Maybe you can reach a wall. Don't feel obliged to. Keep the legs steady. Maximum lift of the chest. Legs firm, come up to standing. And step that right leg forwards. And Tadasana. Stepping back with the two legs, and this time your left leg is into the wall. Step the right leg well forwards. Get the distance right. You don't want to be too narrow, not too wide. You want to feel that both feet are evenly weight bearing. Hips evenly facing the front of the mat. Arms up. So this extension is so important because of the space you create specifically in your lower back. Lift. Both feet firmly planted. Lift the chest, lift the chest, tailbone in. Lift the chest, tailbone in and reach. And then inhale, come up. And step your two feet together. Namaste. Tadasana. You can stop the video here and you can redo this a few times. It's a very good practice. And you can also place a block on the wall so that your distance becomes a little bit further away from the wall and you can practice that backbending action. Now, you're going to do a standing backbend and this is not going to be to make the distance enormous. This is just to get the action of learning that we don't bend here. We bend in the upper chest. We bend here. This is where we go back. This must stay neutral and not compacted. So just watch me for a moment. My feet are hip-width apart, slightly pigeon toe tadasana feet. And I keep my feet very firm, take my arms up. Then I lift the chest. I just think lifting chest, tailbone in, lifting chest, tailbone in. And I find the wall. And I straighten my arms. And from there, we come up. So everything is happening from the chest. So let's do it together. Don't start far away from the wall. In the beginning, Start quite close, you can gradually move away, move away. Okay, so feet firm, wide, hip width apart at least. Stretch those arms up. Take the tailbone in and think I'm going to create much space in my lower back. Lifting the chest, tailbone in, lifting the chest, tailbone in. If you need to bend your knees, you do. Find the wall. And stretch, straighten your arms. And lift the chest and up you come. And I'm going to give you time now to do that two times more. When you, if you struggle to come up again, you might need to walk your feet a little bit closer to the wall. So go for it. And remember, you can bend your legs. And those of you that are full on back benders, you know that you can walk your hands all the way to the floor. I'm not there to assist, so please take care of yourselves. Don't make the distance too far away from the wall. If you're a beginner or if this is pretty new to you. Now you should be finished with that. Relax. We continue. So at this stage, we're going to move to the floor. And when we do lying down back bends, where we do the abdomen to the floor, I prefer to have a blanket underneath my pelvic area. So you decide, get a blanket if you want one. And from here, you're going to lie flat. 
we're going to work together. So you lie on your abdomen and you part your feet hip width. We're going to work on Shalabhasana, the locust pose. So the feet are hip width. And just stretch your arms ahead of you. Bring your forehead to the floor. Now I'm going to talk while you lie here. First of all, I want you to really roll onto the little toe side of your feet and lift your inner legs. So that already releases your lower back. So you press on the tops of the feet, little toe side more, and wiggle so that you feel your lower back is released. Your inner legs will move to the ceiling. Tailbone in so you feel the pubic bone moving on the floor. Now come right to the floor, lift your right arm and left leg and stretch them in opposite directions. Don't think of lifting up, think more of extension. So right arm forward, left arm back. Stretch and release. Exhale, take a full inhalation, take the left arm up, right leg back, stretch, stretch, stretch. And release. Now just take a breath in and a breath out. Then you're going to bring your arms next to your body with the palms to the ceiling. And you're going to roll your shoulders back. Your feet are still hip width apart. I want you now to turn your palms so that they face your body. So they're going to be facing the legs. Shoulders already back. Stretch into your fingertips. Your fingers are still touching the floor. Your thumbs. And now from here, you're going to roll the shoulders back. Lift your head, your chest and your hands only. And stretch and lift. Now, no compression in the lower back. Think chest lifting, shoulder blades in, chest lifting, shoulder blades in. And feel as if somebody is pulling your hands for you. And legs active. And then come down. Now, interlock your hands behind you. Shoulders roll back. We repeat the same pose with the hands interlocked. Exhale. Inhale. And up you come. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Shoulders back. Chest lifted. Shoulders back. Chest lifted. And come down. Take a breath in. Breath out and change the interlock of your hands. Already roll the shoulders back. Legs active, exhale, inhale, and up you come. Now really roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, and release. Now for a moment you just bring your hands under your forehead, toes, inhales out and relax. This is one of the most wonderful ways to release after a little back bend stretch. So the next pose that we're doing is the same pose that we go full, full way, all the way. Okay. So the hands next to the body, palms facing the body. Roll the shoulders back. Get the feeling of the hands that was interlocked. It helps to bring the shoulders back. Exhale. On the inhalation, lift your chest, lift your head, lift your arms and lift your feet. And really fly like the locust. Extending into the fingertips, extending into your toes, lift your inner legs to the ceiling and really lift up and release. Let's repeat that two more times. Exhale. Elongate the fingers. Take a full inhalation and up you come. Prepare for the last one. On the air, exhale first, inhale fully, and then up you come. Extension, lifting, space in the lower back, shoulders well back. And release, and relax. Even breaths here. Okay, so for the last pose, we go full into Dhanurasana. So we're going to hold the ankles. We go together. Flex the feet and hold the ankles. If you cannot hold your ankles, you put a strap around or you repeat the previous pose. Now roll the shoulders 
back, keep the buttocks in line with your, uh, the heels in line with your buttocks and the knees in line with your heels. Exhale, inhale, and lift. Now feel your shins pulling away from you to open your chest and take your shoulders back. And lift the chest. And release. Relax. Take your breath. Last time, hold your ankles. Charge the body to do your best panorasana ever. Give it your all. Up you go. And try to push yourself up to a seated position and you are going to sit on a foam or a folded blanket, cross leg. sit cross-legged because of some knee issue, you can always do a little twist on a chair. Take your hands up into Utpahastasana, stretch. On the exhalation, twist to your right side, lift the spine and twist. Lift the spine and twist. This is not your deepest twist ever. It's a gentle release of the spine after the back bends. Now inhale, drag the arms up, stretch, lift yourself back to the center and release. Change the interlock of the legs. Sit upright, shoulders back. Inhale, up with the arms, stretch, extend. Turn to your left side. Lift the spine on the inhalation and on the exhalation, twist. Continue, but remember this is not a deep twisting class, this is just a release of the spine. Then take the hands up to lift yourself out of the pose and release. Okay, so we want quietness now, so if you've got a chair or a bench or a bed close by, you're going to do the following. You're going to sit on support if you need support. I like to put softness underneath my head. And you are going to sit with the legs crossed. And you're going to be touching the chair with your skin of your forehead. If you're tall and you find that you have to bend down, you've got to put pillows or whatever on the chair just to give more height. And if you find that the legs are strained, you can also sit with the legs wide. And from here, I'm lifting my chest and I'm extending forwards. And just watch my action here. I tuck my chin slightly to my chest to feel the skin of my forehead moving towards my nose because this brings quietness in the brain. So you get your position. Find that softness, that gentleness. Back bends is very energizing, uplifting. But we're now gently just toning down the energy to bring it to a little bit more of a calming state with a very supported forward extension. Take three more breaths here. upright and you change the cross of the legs and you stay for five breaths on the side. Remember to put the forehead down in the correct way. Try to 
this is happening to pay for Shavasana, where you are going to lie with your legs over the seat of the chair, or like in Shavasana, depending on what you prefer. This is wonderful after all the back work to relax the back completely, and then place yourself evenly. Get warm enough. Close your eyes with something if you have disturbing light. And then allow the whole face to relax. You relax the eyes, the mouth. And feel a deep sense of release and a soft smile to let go of all the tension. And just be with your breath. And be with your body for the next few moments. Namaste, yogis.